Hi there, this is William with Eastern Trophies Fly Fishing. We're finally going to show you how to make um, the Topwater Crelex. Um, some things I want to kind of lay out for you so that you understand more about cork um, and cork sizing. Um, most of our bugs are made from cork. Um, the properties of it let it float. When you load it up with epoxy, um, it splats on the water and it gives you uh, vibration through the water column. It, uh, it, it floats unlike foam. Um, you can just, it, it just gives you um, better results than foam does for the most part. So that's why we use so much cork for a lot of our bugs and also the topwater crelex. So the sizes that we have are um, the size one, that's the fly itself, the size one fly, um, the size um, four fly, and then another size that we fish um, pretty often in the summertime, especially in very low and very clear water, is um, basically a size six fly. Um, the sizes of the flies are different than the sizes of the cork. The size of the fly basically gives you um, the size hook that the fly is made on. Okay, so this one is a size uh, number one CK52S. We're going to show you the hooks in a second. This one is a size number four CK52S. And this one is tied on a number six Gamagatsu, um, which is an L11S3H or an L11S3H. Um, but that guy is a size six, real small. Um, the kits that we have on our website are for the size number one only right now. We are in, in you know, the process of trying to get the number four corks, or I'm sorry, the cork for the size number four fly in stock. Um, on this little uh, display here, you have cork starting in a size one, size two, size three, size four. Cork goes all the way up to size 24, and it goes down to, I believe it's triple zero um, on the sizing chart. So as you go up in number, you go bigger in size, okay? This is a one, two, three, and four. The cork sizes that we use to make our bugs are basically size twos and fours. The size to cork, we match up with a number four CK52S hook. I know that's a little bit confusing. The size four cork matches up with the number one CK52S hook. Okay, that's how they match up um, the best in regards to movement of the fly, um, the size and length of the fly, and, and whatnot. Okay, so that's real brief introduction, real brief explanation of cork sizes, what we use, um, the size flies that we fish. Um, probably our overall most productive size is a size one um, uh, Crelex or topwater Crelex. And then the coloration that we've had the most, um, you know, the, the most, uh, the best results, the, the, the biggest fish. I mean, and, and, and this color, uh, combination just outfishes all the others that we've we fished is basically the gold body the red streamer brush and then the silver tail I don't know what it is about this color combination but you know we've we fished all kinds of color combinations but this gold red silver combination is spot on the best combo um, in regards to fishing for smallmouth okay um, the fly is an amazing fly it uh, it's basically like a floating crankbait for the fly rod fishermen. Um, you get extremely good action when the bug is pulled underneath the water. I'm going to show you how to weight these flies so that when you work the fly, it is very little effort to get the fly to go under, um, and the action is the best. Um, the whole uh, the whole way the fly started was the Crelex, which is a subsurface fly, a streamer, is an awesome pattern in itself. I came up with the idea of, okay, why not put, make it a top water fly? So the first version I made was basically just a regular number four cork, okay, with a flat face 
and then put on, you know, tied with the streamer brush and then tied with the cre with the uh, Krennic on the back. It made a lot of noise. We caught some good fish, um, but it wasn't crazy good. Um, I started rounding number four corks in order to make uh, top water, uh, Chuck Craft top water bugs. And I got the idea that why don't I use a round face bug for the Creelex or top water Creelex body. And I started getting good movement still wasn't really where I wanted and then finally I, I toyed around with weighting the hook and putting weight on the inside of the body in order to make it get under a lot easier and that's where we're at today okay I'm gonna show you how to do that so I'm gonna get get some of this stuff out of the way so I can show you how to make the bug um, so these are the number four corks that we have on our website okay they're from Portugal really good quality hor uh, cork um, kind of tough to find this stuff now, but we've got it in uh, in crazy quantities. This is the stuff we use. Now, what I do is when I make these topwater Creelex, is I put the cork on a lathe and I round, um, I round the, the front of the bug, basically using a jig. Okay, I made it. Okay, the jig basically is a sanding block. Okay, or a block with sandpaper on the sides. Put it in a lathe, or you can put it in a drill also. Um, using a jig that holds the cork and then boom you put it in the lathe and you know the lathe basically grinds or sands that front part down and it gives you the rounded bug okay or the rounded cork so basically what we have is that um, next thing you're going to use is a razor blade and you're going to find a good spot on the cork where you slice the bottom off now on a lot of this cork stuff you're going to have pits and holes and stuff what I do is I find the spot that doesn't have um, too many pits or holes, which is going to be this part right here. That's the cleanest part of this bug of this cork body. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide or slide the razor blade down the bottom of it, and you're going to take maybe an eighth to probably I mean probably about an eighth eighth of an inch slice off the bottom of the bug, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and what this does is it gives stability to the bug in regards to it moving through the water. Um, so what you do with that is once you have it cut down, okay, that's, that's the angle that you're looking at in regards to the, the amount that you're taking off the bottom. You take an emery board. I like the big rectangular ones. I use the coarsest side or the, uh, the more rough side and... I basically sand that down so I got the bug down or the bug body down like that pretty pretty flat and ready to go okay my next step is I take a hacksaw blade okay this is my tricked out hacksaw blade I taped it up um, in regards to making the handle a little bit easier to use because I'm making these like 50 to 100 at a time and then I put tape up here also on top of the blade in order to put my finger when I'm cutting, um, you know, if you don't tape the blade up and you're making all kinds of bugs, you're going to tear through your hands. By doing this, your your blade that you're going to work with is much easier to, to handle. Um, in regards to getting the cut for the hook on the bottom of the bug, you can do it by eye, okay? I'm really good with just doing it by eye because I've made so many thousands of these bugs. Um, another way you can do it is you can use a pencil or a pen as a marker and just put two dash lines right where the center of the bug is and then you make your cut. So right here, um, I basically just run the hacksaw backwards and I get a, I get a rough line as to where I'm going to be and all I do is double check it before I start really going down to the, into, the, uh, into the cork body. and. I'm a little bit slower doing this on camera but pretty much once you get your cut ready to go you're gonna you're gonna make your cut about twice the depth of the teeth on the hacksaw blade okay which is basically that depth right there okay my hacksaw blade is broke off on the front for a reason okay I basically took one long hacksaw blade I cut it or I snapped it in two this edge here, this little corner, I use to push down a little V-cut into the body of the cork, okay? 
what that does is it enables me to get the the bend in the CK52S. There's actually a bend in the shank of the hook that lets me get the bend of the hook into the body. Okay. Um, why do they call? Why does Mustad call it the CK52S? Is basically Chuck Craft CK. Um, designed that hook for them years and years ago uh, for Mustad. So Chuck Kraft actually came up with the with this hook, which is basically uh, a bug hook, um, you know, for poppers and stuff like that. So it doesn't twist when you put it in the body. So basically, my cut is looking like that. Okay. At that point, what I do in order to fit the hook with the weight that I'm going to show you how to do in a second, but there's going to be wire wrapping around the hook. Um, and you're gonna have to fit that into the bug body. If I was to jam it in like this now, it's not gonna work. But what I do, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in a second, is I'm gonna make two cuts outside where the hacksaw blade cut was and about two thirds down the bug, down the body. And it basically looks like that. Two slices that are going outside the hacksaw blade cut. Okay, so you got the thicker cut going right through the middle, that's the hacksaw blade. And then I've got the two slices made by the razor blade. And what that's gonna do is I'm gonna be able to use a bodkin and I'm gonna pick out the parts that I sliced and you're gonna see it's gonna give you a track that's thicker for that wire wrap to go uh, into the body. So basically, I'm just clearing it out a little bit more now. Um, so we're looking pretty. Okay, but basically, it's gonna be cut out like that. This one's a little bit off um, to that right side um, as you're looking on camera. Or, or I'm sorry, left side as you're looking on camera. It's a little bit off to that side, but you can always adjust it and fix it. With the wire, it's 0.025 thousandths. So 25 thousandths wire for the number one CK52S, it's four inches of wire. And basically you wrap the wire on the hook so it goes to just behind the hook eye, all the way back, it covers the, the the uh, the bend in the hook and it's about halfway back this is for the number one four inches of 25 thousandths wire for the number four Creelex okay or topwater Creelex you're looking at three inches of 25 thousandths it'll give you wire just behind the eye of the hook all the way back to the middle and it's it's the same same link or the same size wire um, you know, lead wire wrap, and um, basically once you have your, your hook covered the way that I just showed you in the picture, all you do is test fit, I always test fit the bugs, um, so that it goes inside, just like that, okay, and that's what you're looking at, okay. You want to give yourself some room on the front of the hook, or on the front of the fly, rather, so that when you uh, clear coat your epoxy, you have room for you know some some epoxy to work through, and it doesn't cover up your uh, the eye of the hook. And you also have room on the back, okay, to tie in your streamer brush and your your uh, Krennic when you're when you're doing the finishing parts of the fly, okay. So this this one is is okay. It's a little bit off to the side, you know. It's not dead center, but you know you can get away with that. I'm real picky on the ones that I'm making for people to purchase because um, I want them to all look cookie cutter. Um, but basically, once you dry fit it and everything's good, you back out the hook and you're going to use gel Loctite super glue. And basically, I'm actually going to do this one for you or do this one so you guys can see. I basically fill that whole slot with Loctite gel super glue. Okay, and I really got down deep. And then you take your CK52S with the wire wrap going around the hook, and you just set it right in there. And then 
what you always want to do is you always want to look at it from straight on and you always want to make sure it's perpendicular. The hook needs to be per per perpendicular to that flat cut that you did on the bottom of the uh, down on the bottom of the buck. Okay? So from there, I, I've I've got all my gel or Loctite gel super glue down underneath and inside. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take gel Loctite and I'm just gonna push it through um, basically into the top part just to light, lock everything in. It doesn't have to be perfect. This stuff takes a while to dry once it's in the air, um, especially when it's left exposed to the air and it doesn't have anything to, to grab onto or, or to touch. It dries pretty slow. Um, but what I do is I put mine in a drying rack like this and I'll just let them dry even though it doesn't have to be turned or anything. I'll just set them in here and then I'll turn this, you know, as I set, one, set each one into um, the slot to dry. Once this dries, I take DAP wood putty, okay, and I fill in any kind of holes that are left in the hacksaw cut, um, the slot where the hook went, and this stuff is really easy to work with. Um, I also patch up any holes that are in the cork, especially on the top side, okay and then I let the DAP wood putty dry. This stuff dries pretty quick. It's drying about 15 minutes, so you can work you can work pretty quick. But once you have everything puttied up, let it dry. I take an emery board and I sand everything down, okay? And then basically what I have is a bug body just like this, except it's not painted, okay? It would be ready to paint. What I use to paint these bugs is nail polish, okay? The gold, red, silver combination, the nail polish that I use is Sally Hansen's and it's golden. That's the, that's the color name is golden, all right? Um, it's, it's easy to, easy to use as a paint. Um, it's good to go. The next step after you paint um, I usually do definitely definitely one coat, obviously, to get that color on it. But I usually am doing two coats of the nail polish. Once the nail polish is dry, then we go and we do the clear coat of Gorilla Glue Epoxy. Okay, hard to see because it's, I got it right there, but Gorilla Glue Epoxy. Um, and that's the next step I'm going to, uh, next step I'm going to show you how to do is to do the clear coat epoxy. Um, using the dryer and then the last step is going to be putting the streamer brush and the Krennic on. All right, so let's jump to the epoxy. Okay, so this is the middle step of making the topwater Crelex. Um, basically some things you're going to need for the clear coat um, are going to be q-tips, okay, we break the end off to apply the epoxy, um, some kind of mixing cup to mix up the two-part epoxy that we use. Um, mixing cups, you can grab them from, uh, <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I get mine from McDonald's with the little dispenser uh, cups that they have for ketchup and sweet and sour sauce. Um, the other thing you're gonna need is Gorilla Glue Epoxy. Um, we've got this stuff on our website. It's the best epoxy that we have found. We've tested like eight different epoxies. Um, and Gorilla Glue just kind of comes out the best. So basically you're just going to mix an equal, uh, two equal parts of epoxy in the cup. Um, you mix it up. Pretty simple and standard. Um, it comes out of the tube, but basically after you get it in your cup, you just mix it really quick. And then when you're applying the epoxy, I mean, you've got about four to five minutes of working time before it starts to set because um, it is a five minute epoxy. It dries completely in 24 hours. So, but basically, what you can do is if you're really quick and efficient, you can get about three, two to three bug bodies out of each mix that you do. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going around the entire body using the end of the Q-tip that I broke off. I then cover the top and then I cover the front 
and you want to make sure that the entire body is covered once you put it on the dryer the dryer does a lot of the work for you even evening it out um, but the back is also an important part <clears throat> doing the back of the bug just so you have a, a whole watertight um, body with these guys so once you have everything covered what I do is I I do a double check I do one turn just to double check that I'm not missing any spots I hold it upside down and basically what I'm waiting for is is two things I don't want any um, any epoxy to beat up by the hook at the back of the fly or at the back of the body but I want the excess to drop down you can kind of see as it's you know gravity is helping us out here but gravity is letting any excess drop to the back of the bug and what I do is I take the excess and I just kind of pull and I sweep it forward and then from there I take the bug out of the vise and I put it into my dryer and then I'm good to go this is just a quick shot of the dryer that I have um, there's all kinds on the market but this one whole holds um, it's got 24 slots so basically I can get a, a, about a dozen bugs done at a time in this size these guys are the size number fours for the top water Creelex this is the smaller size but I usually you know do 12 at a time it's good to make them in dozens and it just makes everything uh, a little bit easier all right we're almost at the well not almost we are at the last step for finishing off this top water Creelex we've got our uh, our bug body our top water body all ready to go it's got the clear coat of epoxy on it um, you know we usually let this cure and sit for 24 hours um, the epoxy basically dries um, so that you can uh, you can handle it you know rock hard ready to go 24 hours it'll set in five minutes but you really don't want to handle it too much because it's just uh, it's just too too tacky um, it doesn't fully cure um, until 24 hours in so basically to start this guy we like to make our bugs as tough as tanks so you're catching 50 60 70 80 fish on one fly so we want them to last I start the thread with a little bit of Loctite just so nothing slides around the back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a dam of thread as a bump at the bend okay and you're gonna you're gonna kind of see it build up and what I'm doing is basically I don't want any of the flash to slide off the back um, I don't want um, I don't want any of the streamer brush to kind of slide off the back so you can see using a little needle here you can see the bump of thread right there um, it's just a little bit uh, more pronounced than in here right behind the body okay so what I'm gonna do each step I'm putting a little bead of gel Loctite super glue in before I tie my my next uh, my next material in so this is Krennic um, the magic flash material that we use in pretty much almost all of our patterns that require it we've got a uh, PVC tube here that kind of keeps everything in check and get it to our topwater Creelex length. I'm going to take about 20 strands of this stuff, maybe 15, um, and that's going to give me the tail. That's what gives it the action. So basically we're looking at a bunch like this and I've already got my little bead of gel Loctite super glue right on the back and I'm just going to go and wrap the bunches in right behind where the body of the bug is okay so that's what we got there you can trim your tail now if you want just to make it even okay and the way that I have my my links set up is I know using my regal vise as a gauge I know exactly how long my tail needs to be for number one I know exactly how long it needs to be using a two uh, number four rather using my vise as a as a measuring tool okay so next material that we're going to put in is the streamer brush okay red is what we use mostly for these top water Creelex because our top top color uh, combo 
most effective color combo is going to be gold, red, and silver. So you put the little wire tag end in, okay, you let that get wrapped in about five times, and then each turn of the streamer brush, you just kind of pull the material back so it lays to the back of the fly, and you're going to do three wraps. And three wraps of this stuff is, it, it, it doesn't take much for you to just get the, get the illusion and, and get that, um, get that kind of body silhouette in regards to, um, you know, getting, getting your, uh, getting the body tapered down to the tail. It's a really good, um, really good taper. And usually I use an older pair of scissors to nip this streamer brush stuff. Um, I have one set of scissors that I use to nip any kind of wire. From there, uh, once I get my three wraps in, okay, I'm just going to do a whip finish right behind the body and pretty much you're good to go from there. Um, after you get that done, what I usually do is I take uh, Sally Hansen's or Zap a Gap or um, hard as whole, and I put a little, little drop of head cement or or super glue where my whip finish ended, and then that is basically your finished fly. Um, pretty simple to tie. It's just got like steps to do, but extremely effective. Once again, the top color combination for the past four years fishing this bug. Um, especially once we got it tweaked down to what the finished product was going to be. Top combo, gold, red, silver. And that's the top water Crelex. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helps. We got kits on our website for the number fours. Cork comes with it. Um, the hooks and um, the Krennic and the streamer brush. Basically all you need to do is uh, provide the wire wrap for, um, for the weight and the Sally Hansen's nail polish and the Gorilla Glue epoxy. Um, but we've got Gorilla Glue epoxy, the streamer brush, and the Krennic on our website also. So I hope this helped. Enjoy it. And uh, this sucker is a great, great fly for topwater smallmouth bass. And we are going to have an instructional video coming up on how to fish the topwater Crelex. 